All right, everyone. So for for today, uh, this is day four of our class. We've got six days here, um, and what we're going to do today is focus on um, combining concepts, all the concepts that we've been looking at so far, uh, which has been HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're going to combine them all, and we're going to work with a um, with a framework with a starting point, with a template, with a way to get us running quickly on this concept because again we could do one month straight on only HTML and that's still not enough. We could do month, one month straight on just CSS and that's not enough. We could do one month straight and I'm talking about Monday through Friday on just JavaScript and that's not enough. All of these technologies are huge technologies and I was actually working with the Dean and the department chair recently to develop these classes into an actual certificated program and to my knowledge it has been approved so eventually these classes in one or two semesters are going to be part of a certificate where then you can go you get a certificate you then you do the classes and everything and uh, get a certificate the downside of course is then they'll have to be homework and quizzes and all of that but um, uh, be on the lookout for that so for us, in the month that we have, in the three weeks that we have for part one, we obviously cannot cover everything. But today we're going to start to cover combining everything we've talked about uh, so that we can get up and running a lot faster because you don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. Every time we've been here, we've been starting a brand new empty document and working with that. We don't want to really start with a blank document every time. We have frameworks, we have templates, we have ways of getting started. And um, once in a while I hear it, and I, and I don't believe it, but once in a while I hear people say, well, that's cheating. Why would we start with the template? I want to write the code myself from scratch every time, just like I want to build my own engine every time I get in the car. No, none of us want to do that. We want to drive. So the same thing will hold here, where we're going to start with some frameworks. It doesn't do the work for you. We're still going to need to do a lot together in code, but at, the, at this point we're going to start introducing a few frameworks. So let's go ahead and open up Notepad++, as always. And even though I said we're not going to start over every time, we're going to start over one more time. One last time. One last time. This one is going to be the further framework that we're going to work with. So um, let's go into Notepad. Let's go to File, New, File, Save As. And I'm going to save this to my flash drive with today's date. And we will create that uh, 10 line basic HTML file one more time. Um, and then we're going to kick it into high gear very quickly. So the usual, we're going to create the doc type, the HTML tags, the head tags, the body tags, the meta tag, the title. Our title will call it Intro to jQuery Mobile. And in the body, we'll just type heading one jQuery Mobile. Just some quick 10 lines to give us a very basic document, and then right away after this, we will get more complex. All right, so as we type this up, the concept of a framework or a template is something that will allow us to accomplish our goals faster. Uh, one of the big 
uh, frameworks that we hear about in, in web design and, and, and so forth is jQuery Mobile and also jQuery and Angular and a bunch of frameworks, a bunch of things that will help us get our work done quickly. For example, jQuery, one of the big famous frameworks, its motto is write less, do more. We saw previously that we had some JavaScript. We clicked on a button and it did something. And we had to write document dot get element by ID, the name of the element, dot on click equals function, and then it did something. All of that document dot get element by ID stuff. Don't write this, but document dot get element by ID. All of this stuff right here. can be translated to this in jQuery mobile. We wrote this in plain old JavaScript, document element by ID, which ID? Happy. All of that can be translated into dollar sign happy in jQuery mobile. <coughs> Write less, do more. Both are equivalent. Um, but we write this, and then this basically gets translated back to that, and it does what we want. Um, furthermore, we had on click equals function. So again, you don't have to write this. We this is just an example, and then we had alert something. See, I'm going off the edge of my page. I can write the same thing like this in jQuery. So this as opposed to this, both are equivalents pretty much. But this jQuery version of it is like a shorthand. Many think many times that's what a what, that's what a framework is. It's a shorthand. It's a quick way to do something. Um, and we'll see that jQuery then can go above and beyond to do things that with plain old JavaScript are very hard, or uh, typing a lot of typing required. Um, the catch is that for this to work, this doesn't work natively. This doesn't work automatically by just typing it into my script tag. I need to reference the, job, the jQuery library. I need to reference that this means something. In plain old JavaScript, the dollar symbol doesn't mean anything really. But jQuery takes that and allows us to do shorthands. If you're working with uh, Angular, AngularJS, that's another way to do something complex in a short amount of of, uh, of code. Um, it's not that it's another language. <coughs> Angular and jQuery and jQuery Mobile and all of these are, are offshoots of JavaScript. They're sort of dialects, but they're just different ways of doing something faster or easier. So actually, I'll put that in my notes file. This uh, first one is plain old JavaScript. And this equivalent is jQuery. So you're seeing here how much more I have to type. Sometimes it's very dramatic, as I showed a moment ago, that that whole get element by ID was reduced basically to the dollar symbol. And I still have to do other things. I've got on instead of on click, and I still I mentioned click here, and I still got that function and all of that. Some things won't fully compress down to these these short uh, commands, but uh, the more you do this, uh, the more you use jQuery, for example, as a shorthand. The 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 leaner your code could be, the more efficient and uh, less space it takes up. We're getting our header ourselves, but this is what we're going to work with today, jQuery, and then jQuery mobile. 
which is more jQuery that's designed specifically to create projects that are mobile friendly. We're going to type some commands that are going to re be reminiscent of JavaScript. Uh, they will look a little bit different, but they're underneath the hood. They will then get translated into the plain old JavaScript or CSS or HTML. We're going to see that with our knowledge so far of the class, we're going to be able to create a mobile-friendly project very quickly. So let's get back to our code here. And in order for any of this to work, we need, um, again, to reference these, these libraries and such. That just means a file basically. A, a library in our sense is that there is a file that has all the jQuery definition and we're going to connect to that file and then we can use jQuery. Let's back up to the head section of our document right after title. And one of the things that we'll do, because we're ultimately going toward a mobile-friendly website and then an app, is that we want to define here another meta tag. Actually, um, <coughs> let me back it up and let's put it under the other the other meta tag. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but I just want to aesthetically I want to put my meta tags together. So let's create another meta tag. Meta. We've only used one so far, the car set. We'll use another one here. This one is unique because it has two attributes. We have to write here uh, name, quotes, viewport. Remind me again, what's the viewport? The, the, the main uh, visible area of the browser, uh, basically in the body section, the viewport. So right now we're going to do something about the viewport. We're going to control the viewport somehow. Space. We're still inside the meta tag here. Be careful. And we're going to write content equals quotes. We're going to define various properties of the viewport. One is called initial dash scale. We'll say equals one. Have you ever been to a website on your mobile device? that then the text is really small. You have to zoom into it. Here we're saying initial scale 1. And that's basically 100%. The initial zoom on our project will be 100%. Instead of me having to double tap to get into it, the initial zoom, the initial scale of my project will be 100%. <coughs> Comma, space. Furthermore, I'm also going to say user dash scale uh, scalable user dash scalable equals no user scalable right now if we visit some websites we can zoom in we can zoom out I'm the user I can scale it I can zoom in I can zoom out I'm saying no don't let the user zoom in and out no problem we've set the zoom already to a hundred percent to fill the screen so we're making our text nice and big and readable on the mobile device and not letting people zoom in and out. Is there any app like Facebook, Instagram, whatever, that you remember that you can zoom in and out of it? Every app that is designed as a native app is perfectly fitted to your device, isn't it? Yes. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. We're trying to make our project fitted to our device without having to zoom in and out like a plain old website. One more comma with equals device with device dash with. Again, we're trying to lock the scale of our web site to fill a mobile device or any device actually as much as possible. We're zooming it in fully, we're not letting people zoom in and out and we're forcing the width of the project to the width of the device. So if I'm vertical, it's going to fill up the space here. If I'm horizontal, it'll still stretch to fit the size of my device. This meta tag here is a very common meta tag when dealing with mobile-friendly websites. Um, so that's one of our steps here.
we are then going to uh, go after we're going to we'll go to line seven. So uh, we're still in the head section, and this time we're going to uh, link to a style sheet. So this is the link tag. Link tag doesn't have a pair. We we looked at link a couple days ago when we linked to a CSS file. So we have to define a property or an attribute here of link. We're going to then say uh, rel style sheet. We're going to say we're linking to a style sheet. We have to say which style sheet. So we also say ref href. And previously we had, we created a file, saved it as .css, and then we linked to our index. Um, as we've seen with images also, not only can we link to images that are in the same local folder, but we can link to images on another website. And we can link to CSS files and JavaScript files, just about any file, on the internet. So uh, we're going to connect to the jQuery mobile CSS file that's online <coughs> to give us the power of being able to use jQuery mobile and jQuery. So we're going to type a big address here. We'll do it the hard way the first time, and then we'll do it the easier way later. But in the href, we're going to type http colon slash slash code dot jQuery 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 dot com slash mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS rolls off the top <laughs> obviously I'm not asking you to memorize this we'll be able to copy and paste it later but here let's go ahead and type that address and yes it of course matters that you spell it correctly it's all lowercase Mind the dots and the dashes. We do need the HTTP portion as well to be safe. Code.jQuery, that's a Q, not a G. Code.jQuery.com slash mobile, mobile, slash 1.4.5 slash jQuery dot mobile dash 1.4.5 dot min dot CSS. This is connecting to jQuery.com and is accessing version 1.45 of jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is going to allow us to very quickly create very cool mobile-friendly interfaces with the code that we know and more code to learn. But that CSS file, uh, it's like, I don't know, 100 kilobytes or something or less, and it has these definitions that we're going to tap into. What we also need to tap into is the, uh, J uh, the JavaScript components. We need CSS and we need JavaScript, specifically jQuery. So as I said previously, when we add any JavaScript stuff, it's best practice to add it at the end of body. So let's jump down to body, my case line 11. And here we're going to have two references to two external JavaScript files. These will be the jQuery libraries. We're going to type another big address again like this again, uh, but again later on we'll copy and paste it a lot easier. We need the script tag. This one does have a pair. And previously we wrote JavaScript in between the two tags, but we can also use the tag to link to an external JavaScript file. We didn't get to that last time. We were writing all of our code embedded within the script tags, all our JavaScript code. But we can use the script tags to also connect to an external JavaScript file. And that means adding another attribute to script. SRC this time. Why didn't why they didn't also call it href? Who knows? But it's href for link and source src for script. And in this case we're typing something very similar, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery 
1.11.2.min.js. That's the jQuery mobile library. It's a collection of commands, basically. It defines, like what I said earlier, that dollar symbol is the shorthand basically for document dot get element by ID. That dollar symbol is defined in this file basically. So if we tried to do that code that I wrote a moment ago without this, you would get an error in the console that says what's dollar symbol. But with that it means basically document dot get element by ID and more things. Next line. We need another script. Another script pair of tags and another source. And let's make it easier on ourselves. And let's copy and paste the link to the jQuery mobile CSS file. Copy the, copy the link to the CSS file up here in the quotes. Copy that put it in the quotes there, and we need to change it to .js instead of .css. So I'm suggesting copy your href from line 7 and paste it into your source of line 12. And then we have to change .min.js. If we type these three lines of code properly, we now have a very powerful project. We have all the power of jQuery and jQuery mobile. And that is a 600-page book. So, But it's going to be, even for beginners, easier than you think. There's a lot of nuances and a lot of things that you can do. That's why there's a huge books about it. But actually grasping it and using it and such can be relatively uh, straightforward, intuitive. Um, for the moment, this project doesn't really do anything. Let's save it and run it, and I just want to confirm that you're not getting any weird error messages. Save it and run it in Firefox. Open your console and check that there isn't any any errors in your console. Let's pause to make sure that works. And um, save it and run it, and actually you should see slightly different than before. You should see a, a thicker looking text there with not a pure black, it's slightly off black if it's working right. If it looks plain old times New Roman, you might not be right. And also check your console. So is anyone having any problems with your file? We want to make sure this works before we go on. This is a foundation. Any errors out there? Remember everyone, please mute your devices. <laughs> <laughs> Any problems out there? Speak now forever, hold your peace. Okay, so what this gives us is a, is a whole world of new commands, so to speak, that then get translated over to CSS, HTML, and or JavaScript that let us do a lot of very cool things. We're also going to introduce HTML5. Now we have been working with HTML5 technically the whole time because our doc type said so, but we haven't really used any HTML5 specific tags. We will now. And the thing about HTML5 specific tags is that they focus a lot on semantics. You might hear the term semantic HTML. What does, the, what does semantics mean? Haha. What does semantics mean? The meaning of things. Semantics are the meaning of things. Um, so, uh, semantic HTML is that we've got tags that have a meaning. Uh, we didn't do it in this class at the moment, but oftentimes what you see when you're writing, let's back up here to line 11 before our scripts, and if I type this div tag, we haven't talked about it, but a div tag is a classic tag in HTML for, and before that, 
that is a basic generic container, div, division, I believe is what it stands for. It's a division in the document. It's, it's a way for you to carve out, let me make a left column, so let me make a div. Let me make a right column, so I'll make a div. Let me make a footer, so I'll make a div and put my footer content, or a div for my header. We can make little sort of boxes, spaces, for the content of my website, my app, div. But div has no inherent meaning. It doesn't have the semantics of a modern um, project. It's too generic. And we do use, st we still use divs, but we have tags, the right tag for the right task. So we're not going to use div in this case. There is a built-in tag uh, that will help us define a screen full of content. And that tag is HTML5 tag section. There is a section on this website for the home page. There's a section on this website for the about page. There's a section on this website for contact or products or the gallery, whatever. There's a section for content. And the cool thing is we will be able to write, you know, a five-page website or app, home screen, about screen, contact, whatever. We'll be able to define all of those five pages in one file. <laughs> in one file, we will have a section for each of those screens, or as many as we want. Um, and that's known as a as an SPA, SPA, single page app. All pages of our app or website are in a single file. A classic way of making a website is that you have index.html, there's my home page, I've got contact.html, there's the contact us page, etc., etc., prod.html, whatever, for our products page. Right? That's the classic way, I guess, an MPA, multi-page app. So every section is in its own file, and that has pros and cons. And what we're going to engage in is an SPA, single page app. All pages of our app are in one file. So everything is in the index file, the home file. And that's the traditional name of the home file. Index HTML. In there, I've got a section for home and contact and about and products and everything. And that's what we're going to work with. And that has pros and cons. Um, con or a negative. Lots of code to deal with. Now you've got 500 lines of code in one file, 5,000 lines of code in one file. So you have to navigate all of that code. In theory, could slow down your project. Depending how much code you have, how complex it is all in one file, it could slow down because the web browser has to load all those 500 lines of code before it even maybe shows you what's on screen. So it could slow down your project. A pro, a couple of pros are consolidated. Everything is in one place. You can find all your code in one place. We're going to become best friends with control F. Find. We're going to find stuff in our 500 lines. We're going to use that control F. We're going to find um, our line of code. I don't remember what line it's on, but I remember I wrote something like data da data role equals home. Good. I can find that and jump to my line of code. And also, <coughs> only way to become most immersive. And that's a fancy way of saying we're going to be able to have cool animations, transitions and such. Um, it's going to feel like a native app. Because when you go from an index file to a contact file, there's a break. Suddenly it goes from one page to another with no transition, no animation. If you use any, any apps nowadays, there's something that slides into view. It fades in. It pops open beautifully. All of that user experience that we have from a native app, we can accomplish that in a website if we're an SPA. 
So you can kind of say the opposites for the MPA. A good thing about the MPA is that it could be a little faster, it could feel faster because you're only loading the content necessary at that moment. Uh, you don't have as much code to deal with. Your index file is only going to have 40 lines of code and then your product's another 60 instead of it all together. And then the cons would be, well, now you've got files strewn about everywhere. Where's the right bit of code? I'm in the wrong file. Mm -hmm. And the big thing about it is I'm going to lose the ability to most effectively create these animations and transitions. You might think, well, I don't care if it animates. You will. If you want it to behave and feel like a real app, a real Android app, a real iPhone app, all of those apps, look at the little, look at that little frosting on the cake. When you tap something, look how it pops open and bounces for half a second. All of that stuff can be accomplished with jQuery, jQuery Mobile, and it's most effective when you're an SPA. So I think this class attracts a lot of people that are very techy and less people that are a little artsy. And you're going to need to be both to some degree. Yes, you can handle the code. You're also going to need to handle a little bit of Photoshop, a little bit of graphics, a little bit of copywriting, writing the language of your, of your, uh, of your app's description to get downloads. If you're going to go from this class from month one to month three, you're going to get a sample of it all. It's just not, it's not going to be code every single day, every single time. We're going to spend some days where we're in Photoshop. And that shouldn't scare you, because you'll have to do that. If you're going to be your, the main app developer, you're going to need to handle everything. Or, you know, outsource it. But if you're uh, struggling and on your own, you're going to have to handle everything. So we've got a section, and what we need to do is define it further, because this has a meaning that it's a section of content. And now we're going to supercharge it with jQuery Mobile. We're going to add a couple of attributes here. Go into the section tab section tag, and then we're going to add the attribute data-role equals. Data-role. Data dash is an HTML5 construct. This is a cool way in the HTML5 specification to add extra features to uh, a tag or an element. We can sort of like embed extra data into that tag that we can reference and use in cool ways. Specifically, role is something that makes sense once we've got jQuery mobile. And we're saying here, data role in quotes, page. We're fully setting this up, that this section is a page of content. Another attribute, id equals, we're going to have a home page, an about page, a contact page, whatever, and we need to be able to jump from one section to another. So they need, a, they need a unique ID, and that's actually the same ID as CSS. jQuery Mobile borrowed this. So here we need some sort of name that delineates that this is this section. Let's be really creative and call it home. This is the home section, the home screen. So I'm going to move, actually, this jQuery mobile h1 into section. And then after this section, let's create another section. This is one screen full of content. This is another screen full of content. We have to define it like we do here, data role page. It's another page. And with a unique ID. So we'll back up to line 13. We'll say data-role page ID equals, let's say this will be our about screen. And I will write heading 1 about us. Save it and run it. And check your result. If you want to save it, you want to go up to the Run menu and select Firefox or whatever. Actually, I recommend Firefox because there's a little quirk with Chrome that when you sometimes try to access external JavaScript files, it doesn't let you because it's trying to be very protective of you that you accidentally don't connect. 
to a malicious JavaScript file. So make sure you run it in Firefox. When we're on a real website server and such, there's no problem. But for the moment, in a testing environment, Chrome might not work. So make sure you're Firefox. What should work, what should happen is looks just like the same as before, but I've got an about us content that I wrote, and all of our knowledge so far would tell us that anything that we write in body will show up in the body. But now we've got a new section. So there's a whole other screen of content that exists here that we want to get to with buttons or navigation bars and all that cool stuff that we can create very quickly in jQuery Mobile. So I just want to confirm also nothing weird is in your console. Remember F12 to open the console. I don't have anything there. Hopefully you don't either. Does everyone see something like this? The point of that is that we've got two screens of content now. And we need to then program it so that we can get to the other screen. Let's back up to, to our first section. Before, well, after jQuery Mobile H1, let's write here <coughs> another HTML5 element. Oftentimes, when you have some sort of app, you know, just about any app, I'm just going to pull up Instagram, you have an app, and then oftentimes, you have some sort of navigation elements at the top. Well, what might you call that section up there? Menu. Menu. It's in a. It's in a head. It's in a header section. So we have an HTML tag called header. This didn't exist in HTML a few years ago. Now there's a tag that is specifically designed to hold content in the header, in the top of the of the page. And we will then supercharge this again with another addition of some jQuery <coughs> mobile code data dash role, and in this case, header. I want the heading one actually in the header. So I've got header, open, close header tags, data roll, header, and move your H1 into there. Save it and run that. Let's see. Save it and run it. Wow. I've got a head section up there text-centered, the default color, which we can, of course, change. But I didn't have to write a bunch of CSS to align it in the center, or do my padding, or all of that. I can, of course, still fully customize this. I can, of course, still write CSS to override the defaults. The defaults are not going to be very colorful or interesting looking, but it's going to be an amazing starting point. And then we're going to add our own custom CSS, our own custom JavaScript, and make it be that cool project that I showed on day one. And then that'll evolve into our Android project, our iPhone project, our Windows phone project. But here's what I've got so far. Did everyone get this? And it's responsive. I believe I've mentioned that keyword before maybe. Responsive web design is that your project changes, it responds to the size of your web browser. If I've got a really small smartphone like that, it'll look nice. If I've got a wide tablet, it'll look nice. Question? All right, pull up my code right here. So this is our this is our starting point looking at jQuery Mobile. We're going to be using mostly jQuery Mobile, which is of course CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Expect expression Purple, 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 purple,
I'm not sure when it not when the browser reads it, but it's better for me to see when it holds it. Yeah. You see when you see the like HTML? You see the red line? It shows you all the way to the top of the If you click on head, this will show you all the way to the top of the screen. Oh, okay. So you just be able to see things a lot better. Right. Okay. And then, so I still know it's easier. So you know your body and then the main ones like selections and header and name and then the H ones, the shaman paragraphs, the shaman thirty six and that section. Okay. It just makes it a lot of easier to read. Oh right. And you're sure about your show. I just have space. It's basically it does it for years. Okay. Your body shows up something wrong with the body. Something wrong with it. Because the body should be trying to Why is it? Body section data. Page. No, I'm right. All right, everyone, so uh, this is pretty cool. There's still uh, some uh, caveats, of course. Now that we're working with an external file, three external files, remember this issue came up about what do we do when there's a file on someone else's server and that server crashes? Well, we are beholden to someone else's files, but jQuery.com is not going to go down. Uh, they said that about Comcast, and they were wrong. But um, you know, one of these big one of these big servers like that, you can get the jQuery files from Google, from Microsoft, from jQuery. This is known as a CDN. Have you heard of that term before? When you connect to some other file on some other server. That's often known as a CDN, which is a content distribution network. Distribution network. That's just a fancy way of saying this website is distributing that content. This website is distributing this jQuery file or jQuery mobile file or you know whatever structural file that people need. And so we're borrowing, we're piggybacking on their network. And later on we'll set ourselves up to be more secure in that we have that file in our local project. Right now we're dependent on an internet connection. So if you don't have an internet connection, your file is going to look plain because it cannot connect to... It cannot connect to the CSS file to style everything. It cannot connect to the jQuery file for a foundation, and it cannot connect to the other JavaScript file for the functionality. Question. Yeah. Uh, 
So basically what you're saying is that we'll be able to download them and then put them in our folders. That's right. These files are downloadable and we can use them however we want. For the moment, we're just connected to them on the server. Okay. Nothing yet. We haven't done anything with it. We've just created a placeholder, but then we're gonna we're gonna get to it. We need to create content so that we can click from this page to go to the other page. So let's back up to our section of home, our home section. We've got a header area. Um, after header, let's add another pair of tags here. This one, um, this tag here is a little bit more makes a little bit more sense if you think about it in terms of classic websites and maybe even print media. You've got a tag called article. Let's say I've got a website where I've got blog posts. I've got a website and I've got this article and that article and that article. So that's our main con that's my main content of my blog in the terms of this being a website or an app this is also going to be the main area of your main content. Header section, a main content section, and a sidebar and other stuff. But this one needs then another data role. We're going to use data role over and over and over. Data, data dash is technically HTML5, and we're specifically using role, which is jQuery mobile. And we're saying that this is our data role of content. In this section, um, I'm going to add an H2, and I'll write uh, <coughs> welcome, and then a, play, a simple paragraph, just putting a little content, and we'll say, uh, this is our amazing jQuery mobile project. Save it and run it. See this result. We're taking this semantic HTML5 code, it has a meaning, it's a section of content, and this is going to be always hard to, to talk about. I just said a section of content. We have the section tag, but I mean, you know, sometimes the terminology here. We have an area of content, and our section is a page, a screenful. An article is an area of content, its data role is content. And I added H2. Because again, H1, H2, H3, the, the hierarchy of content. I would not put H1 here also because there's already an H1 here. Now, why did I also put an H1 here? Because it's in a different section. That's okay. But within this one section, I don't want to mix up multiple <coughs> H1s. There's only one H1 in a page. I can have multiple H2s and 3s and 4s and such, but there's always an H1 separated by sections. If we check our code here, and I recommend change your web browser so it's kind of tall and thin, like a, like a mobile device. If you've got it fully expanded, it'll work. But if you've got it tall and thin, just you know pull the edge of it like that so it kind of looks tall and thin, like the classic mobile device. We will have emulators and all of that later, but for the moment in the web browser, we can kind of make it look like a, like a mobile device. Article is this main content area here. H2 in a, in a paragraph. I want to create a footer area, an area of our section that is the footer down at the bottom. I can have a little menu there, I can have feedback information, I can have whatever. <clears throat> Outside of the article tag, we're going to then add the footer tag, the right tag for the right task. This is another HTML5 construct. If you try to load up Footer in an old browser, you know, Internet Explorer 6 or 7 or 8, it won't know what to do with it and it'll just make it empty, or not empty, but plain. Modern browsers understand this. Internet Explorer, you know, 9, 10 and up, Firefox, new versions, Chrome, new versions, Safari. But again, we're dealing with the most modern stuff because eventually it's going to end up on a mobile device, one of the most modern things. This needs a data role. And remember that I keep saying, when they were thinking about this, no one had this great idea. Well, here they seem to have had the great idea over and over to name these things logically. 
So there is a data row, a footer, to define what the footer is. It's at the foot of the document. Inside here, we will write h4. <coughs> I skipped h3, and that's okay because I might want to use h3 within my article. I don't want to put more than one h4. I want to put it in the footer. I don't want to put more than one h1. It's in the header. But I can do h2 and h3 is within the data role of content. We'll write inside the h4. Let's write copyright. 2016, and then the name of your app company, your app developers. So make up the name of your app company. You can, of course, change it. It can be real or fake, whatever. It can be your name. But the great thing about making a small business is that you're a small business when you say you are. Now, obviously, to be more legitimate and all of that, you need to go to City Hall and get a license and everything. But uh, for our purposes, we can become a small app developer company. Got 30 app developers in here right now. Copyright 2016. I like the little copyright symbol. That makes me look professional. So I can write a little bit of code here. The ampersand, which is the little and symbol, shift 7, copy, semicolon. Ampersand, copy, semicolon will convert when you run it into the copyright symbol. <laughs> wow, look at that. We've got a footer. It's centered. It looks nice. It's the right size and such. We can, of course, override all the defaults. But as, as defaults go, this is a pretty cool starting point. So this... I believe it's a uh, character entity. What's it called? Character, character encoding entity. It's got a fancy name, but this we can write special characters if we know its code. We have more than one. Just for fun, we can write yen, for example, and that will create the yen symbol. We have euro. Notice the syntax. Ampersand, some keyword, semicolons. And we've seen semicolons in JavaScript, but here it's HTML. Why? Well, it's just the way it is. And these then get translated into those symbols. There we go. Copyright, yen, euro. Let's say I wanted to write in Spanish, I want to write ole, and I want the accent on the e. Well, I can write ampersand e acute, semicolon, and that gets translated into ole. So this is just some stuff for fun. We can look up a whole list of all of these. There's hundreds, if not thousands. We can go to w3schools.com and there's a huge list of them. We can go to any website and we, we can look up HTML character codes. And we get a whole list of them. We can do something really cool like this. Ampersand hearts. Try that one. Ampersand hearts. It's the heart symbol, right there. So we can go look these up, and we can go look up emoji. We can get the little, you know, the little smiley face. We can get the, the little dollar bill with wings. We can get the rocket ship. We can get all of those emoji characters that we're texting each other. We can get them, and we can put them in our project. That's, a very, that's actually a very popular thing. Instead of designing a graphic in Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever, we use a font. And that's much more efficient because a font, um, you know, space-wise, is just a couple bytes as opposed to a few kilobytes. And all those kilobytes add up quickly.
Now, if this is supposed to be a footer, isn't the footer usually at the foot of the screen? Why is it my footer down at the bottom? What's that? Yeah, we don't have enough content to push it down to the bottom. But that doesn't matter with jQuery Mobile. Let's go back to our footer code and let's add another data element. This is a new one. This is data um, position equals fixed. Save it and run it. Data dash position equals fixed on the footer. Because you don't want the footer to be moving up and down. With the exactly. I don't see that on apps. I always see that the header's at the top, footer's at the bottom, always. And without data position fixed, it's going to jump around. So now with data position fixed, footer at the foot. So by themselves, footer doesn't do that. Footer is a container for you to put content at the foot. It was designed in the modern uh, style of separating content and presentation. Content, HTML, presentation, CSS. So the powers that be that developed the newest HTML5 standard put out this code, this tag, footer. But then it's still up to us to style it with CSS. The jQuery mobile team, which is a global team with lots of people all over the world working on it to make it better, developed, stepped in and developed, well, let's take footer, for example, and if we use data roll footer, let's automatically center it, make it compact, do that little line divider, and let's invent data position fixed to then automatically keep it at the bottom. It will do the math for us to keep that element down there always whereas we needed to do it ourselves with a bunch of CSS or JavaScript. The jQuery mobile team created this framework, put it out free to the world, and here we are using it so that we're creating something very cool very quickly on the fourth day of this class. If you have no experience in HTML, look at what you've got so far. We need to still deal with, we've got a whole other section of content which exists, but we can't get to it. We we'll take a break. When we come back, we will create buttons and navigation elements and such to be able to click and go to the next page. It's 7:10 ish. Let's be back at 7:20, and we'll go on.